The Dot Product, Level 3. In this video, we will go over a couple of examples that make use of both the geometric definition and component definition of the dot product. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the first example. Let u, v, and w be vectors in a plane or in space. Which of the following expressions are meaningful? Which are meaningless? Explain your answer. We need to determine if the expression shown has any meaning. We can determine this by remembering the end result of scalar multiplication and the scalar product. Recall that one produces a vector and the other produces a scalar. Let's take a look at the first expression, the quantity v dot u dot it with w. Okay, let's break this expression into pieces and analyze each operation. V dot u is going to produce a scalar, which will then be dotted with vector w. Recall that the dot product is defined only for vectors. Here we have a scalar dotted with a vector. So this expression is meaningless, mainly because a scalar dotted with a vector is not defined. The next expression is the quantity v dot u times vector w. The first operation v dot u will simplify to a scalar, which will then be multiplied by vector w. So this expression is nothing more than scalar multiplication. So this expression is meaningful. Notice that the only difference between this expression and the first expression is that in this example, we are multiplying and not taking the dot product, like we did in the first example. The next expression is the magnitude of vector v times the quantity u dot w. Okay, the quantity u dot w will simplify to a scalar, which will then be multiplied by the magnitude of vector v, which is also a scalar. This is essentially ordinary multiplication of real numbers, so this expression is meaningful. The next expression is vector v dot it with the quantity of vector u plus vector w. The sum of vector u and vector w will reduce to a vector, which will then be dotted with vector v. Since the dot product is defined only for two vectors, this expression is meaningful and will reduce to a scalar. Up next is vector v dot u plus vector w. The first operation v dot u will reduce to a scalar, which will then be added to vector w. Recall that it is not possible to add a scalar with a vector, so this expression is meaningless. Finally, the magnitude of vector v dotted with the quantity of vector u plus vector w. The sum of vector u and vector w will simplify to a vector, which will then be dotted with the magnitude of vector v a scalar. Since you cannot dot a scalar with a vector, this expression is meaningless. Alright, let's try a different type of problems. Find the dot product of two vectors if their lengths are 6 and 1 third, and the angle between them is pi over 4. In this problem, we are given the length or magnitude of two vectors. In this case, 6 and 1 third. We're also given the angle between the vectors in radians. We have at our disposal two separate expressions to compute the dot product, the geometric definition and the component definition. For this example, we need to use the first definition since we have the magnitudes and the angle between the vectors. Substituting the values into the geometric definition of the dot product we obtain the following. Then we simplify the expression. Lastly, we go ahead and rationalize the denominator, obtaining the square root of 2 as the final answer. Alright, let's move along to the next example. Given vector a and vector b, find a dot b. In this example, we have two planar vectors in component form. This means that we can use the component definition 
of the dot product to find a dot b. So we go ahead and multiply the x components of each vector together and add this result to the product of each vector's y components. The first product simplifies to 12 and the second product simplifies to negative 6. Then it is just a matter of adding these numbers together, obtaining 6 as the final answer. Notice that we can find the dot product in two distinct ways. It all depends on what parts of the vectors are provided to you. Alright, let's try the next one. Here we have two vectors in space, since we have three components. The dot product can be computed similarly to the previous example. The only difference is that we have three components, so we go ahead and use the component definition of the dot product. We first need to multiply the x components of each vector together and add this value to the product of the vector's y components, which in turn are added to the product of the vector's z components. Simplifying the first product, we obtain 15, and the second product reduces to 0, and the final product simplifies to negative 20. In the end, the dot product is equal to negative 5. Let's try the next example. Here we have two vectors, written in unit vector form. Recall that the unit vectors i, j, and k represent the x, y, and z components respectively. So we can easily find the dot product by just using the component definition of the dot product. In this case, we will multiply the coefficients of i hat together and then add this value to the product of the coefficients of j hat and then add this value to the product of the coefficients of k hat. The first product simplifies to 5, and the second product reduces to 0, and the third product simplifies to 27. Adding the expressions together, we obtain the final answer equal to 32. Alright, let's try a slightly more challenging example. Okay, here we have vector a with components equal to s, 2s, and 3s, and vector b with components t, negative t, and 5t. This might seem a little bit confusing since we do not have real numbers representing the components. In this case, they have been replaced by variable expressions. All this means is that the dot product is going to simplify to a variable expression as opposed to a scalar. So we go ahead and use the component definition of the dot product. We approach the problem in the same way as we did in the previous examples. So we multiply the x, y, and z components together and add them. The first product reduces to st. The second product reduces to negative 2st. And the third product reduces to 15st. Finally, we collect like terms and simplify obtaining 14st as a final answer. Okay, in our next video, we will go over slightly more challenging examples.